we're here today and and once again addressing uh, this scourge that we've been dealing with of uh, heroin abuse and we're here with the coalition that has been uh, working uh, vigilantly to try to address this situation so uh, we're here not just with uh, folks from the county but uh, folks from uh, the county prosecutor's office our sheriff's office uh, local law enforcement uh, there's quite a few suburban police chiefs that are here in attendance as well as the city of Cleveland and of course uh, U.S. Attorney Steve Dettelbach who's been a real uh, leader in this uh, issue. Um, I just want to say a few words about this. So in recent years of course we've seen this alarming spike in heroin uh, usage. It's something that I've even seen in the course of my career back when I was prosecutor many years ago. The whole profile of uh, who uses heroin and how often it's being used has changed uh, dramatically. It is affecting uh, no matter what people's stereotypes may be, uh, the data shows that it's affecting a, a very wide cross-section of our society. It's affecting uh, black and white, rich and poor, suburban and urban, young and old. It, it truly is a problem that knows uh, no boundaries. Now, since September of 2012, the Cuyahoga County Heroin Initiative um, has been working to try to raise awareness about the dangers of heroin abuse and what we can do about it uh, here in Cuyahoga County. We have tried to develop a, a broad-based approach to confront what we think is a public health emergency and a public health threat, and we've taken several uh, significant steps, um, including starting a prescription drug uh, drop box program, expanding access, expanding access to, uh, to uh, naloxone, which is an antidote that reverses uh, overdoses and has already prevented actually more than a dozen heroin deaths uh, just in this community uh, in the last year or so. We've also been working very closely with uh, both U.S. Attorney Dettelbach and Prosecutor McGinney to go after the drug dealers who um, are literally uh, dealing death to the people who buy from them. Um, today I am pleased, first of all, I'm appreciative to uh, the communications folks that are here, the media folks that are here because Public awareness about this is just um, essential. And so I appreciate your attendance here today. And I'm glad that today we're announcing um, a new chapter in our, our law enforcement strategy, which is a new protocol, uh, which we think is going to help bring uh, more heroin dealers to justice and also continue uh, the progress that we've made. So it includes, um, and you're going to hear more about it from uh, other speakers here in just a moment, but it's going to include. Uh, enhancements to the sentencing in uh, federal cases. Uh, Mr. Dettelbach is going to be talking about that where a fatal uh, heroin overdose ends up resulting. Tougher charges by uh, the county prosecutor uh, when, uh, for instance, for manslaughter, when a, again, when a, a fatal heroin overdose occurs. Uh, additional testing at our medical examiner's regional forensic science laboratory. And Dr. Gilson is going to be here speaking uh, to that which is going to help us in our evidence collection procedures. Um, really, really treating in the most advanced way we can uh, this, the scene of a, a heroin overdose as a forensic crime scene uh, so that we can catch, down, catch the uh, and hunt down the individuals that are dealing this substance to folks in our community. Um, by the end of the month, uh, we're, we're also providing additional training for local law enforcement because this is a problem, again, that suburban law enforcement officials, fortunately, only on rare occasions do they have to deal with that in years past, but unfortunately it's become more something that they're dealing with on a, on a weekly basis. Um, by the end of this month, I can tell you that 27 communities will have been trained by our medical examiner's offices in these specialized techniques that I mentioned earlier, and you're going to hear more about them. Um, we are starting to see a slight downturn in the number of heroin overdoses, but I, I want to just emphasize that is very preliminary and it is very slight, and it certainly isn't a cause for celebration because there are still too far, far too many people uh, that are overdosing. Uh, but we have started to see uh, a slight decrease in the first quarter of 2014. We hope that some of our efforts uh, led to that. Uh, the numbers are preliminary, but I can tell you that that quarter shows the lowest level for heroin over overdose that we've seen, we've seen since uh, early 2011. But I, I almost hesitate to even report that because the problem is still uh, far too severe, and we don't know if that's kind of a statistical anomaly or if we've really started to get 
uh, the word out. There is still a lot of work to be done. We don't have any uh, time for complacency. Um, as a matter of fact, until we completely eradicate this problem, uh, we are going to continue to redouble our efforts. At this point in time, I want to introduce uh, the U.S. Attorney for the Northern District of Ohio, uh, Steve Dettelbach, who is going to provide uh, an update uh, from the federal law enforcement point of view. Steve. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Uh, I want to, uh, to begin by uh, uh, thanking all the people up here, especially County Executive Fitzgerald. Uh, we have a great group that's gathered here today, and it's really part of an ongoing effort uh, to deal with this problem. And uh, not with us today, but a crucial part of that effort, of course, is County Prosecutor McGinty. Uh, I'm going to try to speak for our offices together uh, regarding uh, how we're dealing with this problem. Uh, as a career prosecutor, I just want to stress how important this protocol is in order for our offices to do our jobs and to hold heroin dealers accountable uh, to the letter and the full extent of the law. And uh, I want to begin, even though we have a lot of departments here, uh, by crediting both the Cleveland Division of Police and the Sheriff's Department. Working together, they have developed a protocol uh, that not just is the model now for all of Cuyahoga County, but I am telling both counties all over Ohio and U.S. attorneys all over the country needs to be the national model. We need to take what is being done here in Cleveland, now in Cuyahoga County, and do it everywhere, which is when officers come to a scene, uh, they need to have immediate contact with prosecutors uh, like Deborah Naiman. When officers come to a scene, they need to call investigators to preserve crime evidence. They need to have contacts with labs and with their medical examiner's office, like Dr. Gilson's office, to make sure that the evidence is processed properly. And only by doing that, uh, all over the county and all over the district, can we make sure that we as prosecutors have the evidence we need uh, to investigate and bring cases uh, involving people who deal heroin that results in overdose death. And you've seen here both in Prosecutor McGinty's office and in my office a willingness to do that when the evidence supports it. So we will now charge cases under the federal statute that provides when we can show that the death resulted from a particular dealer's activities, there are stiff mandatory minimum sentences of up to 20 years in prison. Uh, Prosecutor McGinty uh, has charged manslaughter cases and cases where he's been able to connect the dealer to the individual overdose death, and we don't intend to stop doing that. And so the message from today really needs to go out to heroin dealers in our community which is if you are dealing heroin and when you deal, kill somebody, you're going to go to jail for a very, very long time. Now, um, as uh, County Executive Fitzgerald mentioned, uh, it has to be an approach that is more than just an enforcement approach. And we've talked to doctors about prescribing habits. And we've talked about the need for increased dollars to go to treatment in our community as well. Uh, but enforcement remains an important part of the equation. And uh, today, we're here to announce that we are going to expand our efforts and we're not stopping. And the message needs to be very clear. This group is not going to stop getting together. This group is not going to stop working together. This group is going to keep our feet on the accelerator as long as people around us are dying. So thank you very much. And now I'd like to introduce the chief of the Cleveland Division of Police. We're the ones who pioneered this protocol, Chief Williams. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, I would also like to thank uh, the county exec, uh, Mr. Fitzgerald, uh, also Prosecutor McGinty's office for basically bringing all this together. Uh, you've heard today about the, uh, the medical aspects of this, uh, about the prosecutorial aspects of this, uh, but the Division of Police is wholly focused on the investigative uh, and assisting the county prosecutor's office with these prosecutions. Uh, probably prior to uh, our involvement, uh, the Division of Police and the County Sheriff's Office uh, with actually investigating overdoses and overdoses that result in deaths uh, from heroin, uh, there were probably very few prosecutions of the actual dealer or the people involved uh, with either the sale or the administration of those drugs to that individual that died. Well, now we have a process in place that actually combats that. And the gentlemen that you see here behind me are an integral part of that process. Uh, we will continue to work with 
the county prosecutor's office, uh, definitely the U.S. Attorney's office, and Dr. Gilson from the medical examiner's office to make sure we continue to prosecute vigorously and that we continue to investigate vigorously any overdose or death that results from heroin. Uh, Dr. Gilson is here from the medical examiner's office who can talk to you guys about a lot of the procedures that are involved in his lab. Thank you. <coughs> thank you, Chief. Uh, thank you so very much, everybody. And I especially also want to echo what's already been said about the leadership that we've received from the county executive, Mr. Fitzgerald, our prosecutor, Tim McGinty, and uh, Steve Dettelbach. What we wanted to roll out today is a set of protocols that let us really take the power of forensic science and apply it to what's a very serious problem in our community, as you've all followed with me over the last couple of years. We're able to now try to use the techniques of DNA, drug chemistry, to get faster results to law enforcement so that they can begin to investigate these crimes in a much more timely fashion. We've realized for a long time that waiting for toxicology results to come back could hold up a, an investigation up to several weeks. We've managed to cut through a lot of those things, again, working with our partners in law enforcement and the prosecutor's offices to get the information out that needs to get out as quickly as possible. A lot of people have really rolled up their sleeves and worked hard, and I can't help but echo the Attorney General, uh, Attorney General, sorry, that's a promotion there, U.S. Attorney. Pretty significant. Uh, <laughs> congratulations. Uh, Different press conference. Right? But um, that, you know, we are really, from all the colleagues I talk to on my side of things, medical examiners and coroners, we are becoming the model for the country in how to approach this problem. And I agree with Ed Fitzgerald. It's too early to say that we're, you know, got the tiger by the tail, but I can say that a very encouraging piece of news I can share with you today is that when we looked at our overdose deaths from heroin for the first quarter of this year, we had final laboratory results pending somewhere between 38 and 40 individuals who died of heroin in this first quarter. That's the lowest we've had in the first quarter since 2011. I agree, unless we sort of, you know, get unnecessarily complacent. We only had 40 people die from a heroin overdose in 2007. We still have a lot of work to do. But I think for all the people who are up here and other ones who aren't here but working behind the scenes, it's encouraging news. And I really am happy to share that with you because I feel like we've frequently been standing at this podium sharing worsening trends. I hope this trend continues and I'm encouraged by it. And I'll think of hand things back to our county executive, Mr. Fitzgerald. Thank you. I, just quickly, and then I won't take any questions. One is, uh, one of the probably underreported stories in the last uh, few years is that our medical examiner's office under Dr. Gilson's leadership has become, uh, forensically speaking, has become uh, the most accredited uh, uh, medical examiner's office in terms of forensic techniques in the country. But that isn't just something that um, is for pure research. It's to have practical effects, and this is something where those accreditations and that expertise is being uh, put out on the street. Secondly, as Mr. Dedebach mentioned, uh, we're talking about enforcement here today, but we also view this as a public health emergency and we have great partnerships with our local uh, uh, healthcare institutions. And we're gonna be talking about that more actually probably in the next week or so. We're gonna be talking with some folks from the Adams Board about some of those healthcare issues, but um, that's just not what we're here for today. But we certainly have this great partnership with Metro Health, all the people that work in public health in this community, uh, Cleveland Clinic, University Hospitals, St. Vincent's, and a, and a long list of others. And, um, but today we're talking about some of the law enforcement approaches. And then finally, I'd, I'd say it's hard to say what to attribute the decline to. And again, it's still not an acceptable level for us. But I, I would be remiss if I didn't say that all the public service announcements that have been aired by just about every news outlet have been a part of that. There are certainly a lot of conversations that are happening and you're helping uh, facilitate those conversations, so we're appreciative of that. Any, uh, any questions for uh, anybody up here? Can you try to explain the, the protocol exactly what happens? So if there's a heroin overdose death, now you're going in looking for specific evidence to go after a dealer? Steve, why don't you go sure. about that? Sure, I'll take a try it, and I don't know if the Chief or, or Gary will want to follow up, uh, because they're the experts, but 
look, all too often in times and years gone past, in every police department really in the country, what would happen when an officer uh, rolled up on an overdose scene uh, would be something different from a criminal investigation. Officer would get to the scene, would see that somebody had died an overdose death, and they might uh, call it in, they might call the coroner, uh, but they wouldn't treat it like a crime scene. So you lose evidence, evidence like cell phone evidence, evidence like forensic evidence that's on syringes, evidence like the evidence that's on the actual uh, victim, the, the, the decedent, uh, evidence that might be around, the opportunity to interview witnesses who might be on or near the scene. These things evaporate in criminal investigations very quickly. And the protocol that's now in place involves, among other things, uh, the trained investigators responding to each and every overdose scene and treating it like a crime scene. It involves immediate contact with the county prosecutor's office. Deborah Naiman uh, personally responds to many, many of these scenes. So there's a prosecutor more times than not on the scene uh, right, as the, uh, right after the death has occurred. Uh, so those kinds of things weren't happening before. And uh, I can ask uh, uh, Commander Gingell if he wants to expand on that, but those are the kinds of things that are now happening in every crime scene. And as I said, this is not just a best practice in Cleveland or Cuyahoga County. This is something that needs to happen all over Ohio and the country. Uh, and, and we are ahead of many, many other counties now in doing this. Anybody want to expand on that? I, I would say, too, that the county, this is the second time the county has tried to provide training in kind of coordinated way with a, with a category of offense. So we did it with sexual assaults because we found that there were some suburbs that were investigating them properly and others that needed a little bit of assistance with, with training in terms of following the best practices when it came to investigating uh, incidences of sexual abuse so, and sexual assault. So we provided coordinated training out of the sheriff's office and and, uh, and, and through our offices, and we're doing it again in this process. And as, as Mr. Dettelbach said, it's a best practice that leads, uh, that can, can aid in uh, successful prosecutions. If you don't run it like that, you're going to have problems with chain of custody and evidence that's been uh, uh, contaminated, and there's all kinds of issues, and, and memories get stale. And so it's important to handle it in an expeditious way, as was mentioned. Any other questions from anyone? Well, again, you have my thanks for covering this because, because of the public communication aspect of this. So thank you for coming. Thanks, everybody.